In this video, I want to take you through the process of reusing your families from Revit inside of Format 360. So I have my tower design that I put together previously in an earlier video. And what I'm trying to do at the top here is create a penthouse type apartment. So I just uh, created some basic shelling and a couple groups here to create the basis of that top floor. And what I have here over on the right under the uh, family symbol here is some content that I've converted via Revit into format AXM files. So what I can do is I can grab any one of these items, select it and place it inside of my format design and it comes through as grouped geometry. Now to get access to this library, you can add them either locally or you can pull it down from the cloud. So you simply just click uh, the plus button here and you can add a local or a cloud library. The cloud library is the one connected to your A360 drive account. I've just got a few that I'm adding here. What we do inside of Revit to do the conversion is we go to our application here and if I just go to a new file here, so this is Revit 2018. Uh, the last couple of versions of Revit have come with the uh, format add-in automatically. If you don't have it in an earlier version, you can uh, download it from the format website. So all I need to do here is, uh, let's say I've got some uh, items inside of my Revit model that I've extracted out. So simply to get the data out, you just go save as, and you can save the families um, from Revit. You can save those into a certain location and extract that all the families in the data. And then you just go to convert RFA to uh, format, and that's the um, uh, AXM file. So simply I just path it to uh, a folder in my network or on my local drive. So I just drop all those Revit families that I've saved out of Revit into that folder. Uh, and then I uh, path it to a new folder. So in this instance, I want it to be my former content. I can also uh, include that in my A360 drive content folder. So it's available on the cloud and just go OK. And that will go through uh, all the Revit families and convert them into format content. So back here inside of format, uh, this is what I've done. So I've gone in and uh, I've pathed that new folder and now I have access to all of this uh, information inside of format. So I don't need to uh, remake any of it. And if I go and uh, look at this item, it's not a Revit family inside a format. It is a, uh, a massing object, but you can grab that information and uh, select it and extrude it and adjust it as, as need be. So you can reuse that uh, Revit family if, if you choose to. Uh, so with that, what I'm going to do is just grab some of this information and populate it inside of my apartment here. So with that, uh, what I've done here is I've grabbed some of those families that I converted from Revit and I've arranged them in my apartment. And on the layers, uh, I have the uh, environment, the roof and the walls here uh, lifted up. So it's got quite a high ceiling height here. Uh, as you can see, these uh, curtains that I've worn from Revit aren't quite right, so I can always reuse that geometry. So when I go in here and look at that particular um, bit of information, I could uh, either double it up or grab uh, these components and slowly try and snap it up. There we go. And then just close out that group. And now we have those looking at a more impressive height for the uh, penthouse apartment. So uh, here's my space, here's all my furniture, and what I want to do uh, is maybe add a bit of materiality to the design. So I'll just go to the library, and in the Autodesk library, there's numerous categories you can choose from. You can also view it in several different ways, um, should you want to see them being displayed here. There's a little HDR type lighting environment here. Uh, so in this instance, I'm looking at um, maybe something like a bit of material for the uh, couch. So I can go here and choose um, something maybe from the generic library that might be, be fitting. 
So uh, you can see here, there's a few type of fabric looking patterns. Um, maybe something floral just for the sake of this demo. So let's say I want to bring in this material, I'll go import and it's available in my library here. Once it's in the library, I can also edit that material. And one thing you'll notice here, it looks quite dark. So just go to the color and turn off the base color and this will display a bit better here. You can also adjust the scale. So if you want it to be a little bit uh, tighter, you can uh, just tidy up how it texture maps. You can also turn on reflections for direct and oblique and gloss. So as you start to drag these up, it will just give you um, a bit more of reflection. So if I drag that all the way up, you'll start to see it's reflecting all the light inside of that spinning scene. Uh, a lot of the times it's quite a good idea just to have a little bit of reflection on everything. It bounces light around, maybe a tiny little bit of gloss. You can also make it tr transparent. Uh, so with that, it's going to go OK. You can also add bumps as well um, via normal maps and cutouts if you want to have alpha channels. We'll just go OK. And I'm going to select that couch. And you can actually uh, paint directly onto that item. And that will do it. And it will texture. Or you can uh, open it. So let's just say I go and get another material. And uh, if I go and select that couch, right click and um, edit, I can then go and paint individually onto the faces there. So you're starting to see here that texture's subtly uh, sort of showing up, or I could just double click and it will grab all the geometry for me. And we got something a bit more uh, respectable in terms of that uh, couch uh, texture, a bit more suitable for a minimalist modern uh, apartment. So that's uh, the easy way to get up and running. So I'm just going to uh, finish adding a few more textures here and then show you the completed model. Okay, so now we have our models in space and I've added some textures and adjusted the textures and you can see here we can get quite a lot of detail into the geometry they have in the scene and we can customize those textures with the bump maps and the texture alignments and reflections as needed and here's our penthouse apartment with uh, skylight grouped objects sitting on top of the model that I created earlier. So if I go to several locations in the model, just before I save this out, and add a, a scene view here, so I'll just call this exterior 01. And you can start to animate these and control what you want to display here. Uh, I'm just going to save these out as my sort of save views around the model. And again, I'm just going to go um, inside the model. I'll call this my um, 02. Okay, and uh, there you have it. And as I click to those different scenes, it will spin around the model for me so I can bookmark um, what I want to be showing people inside of design. So with that, uh, I now want to get this into a VR environment. So there's a couple ways we can do this. Today, I want to just focus on 3ds Max Interactive. Um, I'm going to export it out locally and I want to use an FBX uh, file format here and uh, just export it out with the default settings here at the moment. You could uh, go probably the latest version of the FBX and generate back faces if you choose to. Uh, if you need to know more about this, um, some do or don't render back faces. You could uh, do it as an OBJ or a DAE, however I find FBX uh, works the best. So we export it and put it to a location and that will now extract out their data and the next video will be on how to create a VR scene inside of 3ds Max Interactive.